Greetings and thank you for the opportunity to be able to come to you and spend time with you in the Word of God and prayer. Although these are just short and brief moments, we trust that these devotionals are building you up and encouraging you in your walk of faith with the Lord. This week, uh, I just want to share some stories from our own life, especially the early days, in the very beginning of from the time of coming to know Jesus Christ as my Savior and uh, some things that took place uh, in those early days. Uh, personally, it is always very encouraging to look back and think about the ways in which God has worked. And uh, we also know that sometimes stories uh, are something that people enjoy hearing and can be inspiring. The very first story that I want to share this week, of course, is how I came to know Jesus as my Savior. And it happened in a very, very simple way. I had a friend in school. This was uh, sometime in October of 1981, just before my 13th birthday. I had a close friend. Uh, he was, uh, at that time, he was... Uh, a believer in Jesus, uh, but he came from a non-Christian background. Now, I did not know that he had actually come to faith in Christ. I just thought he was uh, a friend who was from a non-Christian background, but we were close friends because we played football together, soccer together uh, in the school team, and uh, so we were very close. And one afternoon, he invited me, he said, would you like to come with me to this chapel? the school where we were studying, that we had a chapel. I was quite surprised why my friend, who was from a non-Christian background, is going to the chapel during lunch break when usually we go play football. Uh, but because he is my good friend, I said, okay, I'll come with you. So we went to the school chapel and there I saw uh, boys who were praying. And these are some of them I knew, my friends. So I was very surprised because I didn't know this was happening in my school. And uh, towards the end of that short time during lunch break, when boys were praying, our, one of the teachers who was leading that group came. Uh, he saw me, then he said, uh, you come back tomorrow, I'll talk to you. So the next day I made sure I went back, had my lunch, went to the chapel during lunch break. The teacher was there, he took me aside. Uh, he shared a few words with me and uh, then he prayed with me, led me in a very simple prayer. Now, at that moment, I did not feel anything. In fact, I didn't even necessarily understand everything he spoke to me. I just prayed. I didn't feel anything. I didn't see any vision, nothing. But something happened from that moment on in my life. Nobody forced me, nobody compelled me, but something in me had changed. And I was able to go back. I went back to the chapel. I started reading my Bible, started praying. Something had changed in a very simple way. And I'm reminded of what happened in Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11 through 13, where the Bible says, Elijah heard the sound of an earthquake and a fire. And then there was a still small voice and it, God was in that voice. When I look back at those, that moment, the thing I could take away is this, that sometimes God works in a very quiet way, but in a very, very powerful way. I didn't know it was happening, but in those few moments of prayer, my life changed forever. So even though it was a very quiet moment, it was a very powerful moment. It was a life-changing moment. God works in very quiet ways, but yet very powerful ways. Be open to that still, small, quiet work of God that He's doing in your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that many times 
in very quiet and yet powerful ways. You work in us to change our lives forever. Help us to be receptive to those quiet ways in which you work. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.